Okay, the microphone's working. Uh, hello, um, I'm Charlie. Uh, so we have a talk about std format, and um, before we get into it, uh, I just want to highlight that a bunch of people from the Visual C++ team at Microsoft, including myself, are here this week, um, and we have a channel on the Discord, and we also have a survey uh, about our tools that if you uh, use our products, we'd appreciate it. Uh, feedback is good. Um, so this talk has two parts. We're first going to go over what std format is and briefly how it works, uh, what it looks like uh, when you use it. Um, and then we're going to dive into some of the internals. Um, and we're basically going to talk about the kind of front end part of format, everything that happens between when you call the initial function that's specified in the standard to when um, we're done parsing the format string and we actually are just formatting each argument. We're not going to talk about the particulars about um, the mechanics of like how we convert a float into a string or anything like that. We're going to talk about um, how we get your formatting arguments and the specification of how you want to print them, how we get that from, you know, the, the call to std format into the said mechanics of, of, of actually converting stuff. Um, and that part is going to have quite a lot of code, but hopefully uh, some of it will, will be relevant to you if you write uh, similar generic libraries. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So format was added in C++ 20, and it's a new text formatting facility. And it's based on the relatively popular uh, libfmt library, but some features are removed, uh, and some things are changed very slightly to make it fit into the standard. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, that library is inspired by Python's stir.format method, among others. So if you've used that, it'll be similar. You can call, um, it takes a format string specifier um, and parameters to format, and it puts the parameters into the string uh, and returns the formatted string. So you can just insert stuff. Um, you can, after a colon, in the replacement field, you can specify various options. So here we've said, we would like this to have width six and be centered align center aligned. And when you align it, you're going to use asterisks uh, for that. Um, and for the numeric uh, knobs in the specifiers, you can uh, you can specify those dynamically, like you see here. Um, we're saying. Uh, this time we're saying we want the alternate representation, which is how we get the OX and hexadecimal prefix. And then we want the, the, the width to be uh, dynamically specified, and then we pull that in from another argument. Um, there's various other stuff you can do. Um, I, um, yeah, there's a large variety of format specifiers. There's also new specifiers for in C++ 20 for the calendrical and time types in the chrono header. Um, so unlike S, it's unlike sprintf, format is type safe. Um, the worst thing that'll happen if you screw up your format string is uh, format will throw a std format error. Um, and for that'll mostly happen if you're using the std v format functions, which can be used for uh, a runtime format string uh, if you're doing localization. Um, it's faster than sprintf. It's also faster than IO streams, much faster than IO streams. Um, you do, in our implementation, you need to compile with slash utf8 to see major performance improvements. Um, we're working on that for people who need um, other encodings. Um, if you're using the wide versions of format, things are great. It, you don't have to do anything special, it'll be fast. Um, it's available in MSVC in Visual Studio 2019 and 
2022, understood C++ latest. Um, we're going to talk about the plan to bring it to STD C++20 um, at the end of the talk. Um, and you can see just how much faster it is than the alternatives. Uh, this is uh, against our version of IO streams and the our version, the UCRT version of uh, of SN printf. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot faster. <laughs> um, and we get that performance partly by SMPrintf and IO streams um, not being, uh, SMPrintf having some inherent limitations that make it slow, and IO streams, uh, both parts of how you customize it make it a little slower than it has to be, and our implementation has some choices uh, that, some performance trait, some performance choices that don't make sense anymore. But the big, the big reasons why uh, stud format can be faster is that it it's specified to use charconv for floating point conversions and charconv is very fast uh, it's very very fast um, it's not uh, quite the world's uh, fastest floating point to string uh, function um, although uh, an implementation could use the new algorithms that have come out since we implemented it um, std format's a lot easier for the compiler to inline, um, especially than IO streams. Um, there's no virtual calls for the common types. Uh, there's no indirect calls at all for the common uh, built-in types that, that you'd want to format. Um, there are, if you use the customization facilities, that does introduce some indirect calls. Uh, it doesn't interact with locale at all. Um, unless you use a specifier that specifically opts into that. This is nice. That means that when you're writing code using std format, you know that the output will be the, like, will be what's at, what you're actually seeing. You're not going to end up in a situation where somebody has a different locale set and the output's wrong and oh, you're formatting into a, a fixed length buffer and now you've, you know, written all over your stack. Uh oh, that, that's not going to happen. You have to explicitly opt in. Um, and that means that we don't need to uh, construct a look how we don't need to look through, you know, shuffle through your facets. Uh, it makes things a lot faster. Um, format does not interact with Arno. Uh, SPrintf and SNPrintf uh, don't necessarily have to interact with Arno. Um, but the common implementations do, and I believe POSIX requires it. Um, and Arno, of course, is kind of, it's a global thing. Um, so interacting with it can cause problems. You can, there can be contention on Arno. Um, format also has way better support for positional uh, indices. If there's something you want to copy into a string multiple times, you can just pass it in once and say, you know, replacement zero. Um, some versions of sprintf support this. Uh, however, if you pass a bunch of arguments to it and then you try and use the positional argument support on an argument that had to be passed on the stack to sprintf, the implementation of that is a bit of a nightmare. Um, and that can make sprintf really slow. <laughs> so that's just the basics of format, why you want to use it. It's great. Um, it's, it, uh, it just, it just works basically. And it's very fast and if you've used Python before, it'll be very familiar. Um, and so let's get into some of the nitty gritty of how we implement format in MSVC. Um, our implementation is based on libfmt. Uh, the Microsoft run, the Microsoft standard library is open source now. Um, and uh, this was uh, one of the, C++20 was the first uh, standard revision where you know, major features were developed uh, in the open source repo. And one of the things that we did was um, we, our license is compatible with libfmt. And so we can use uh, the techniques that that library does, that that, that library uses and we can just use those directly. Um, and we don't, we didn't have to rediscover them. That said, 
Uh, we don't ship libfmt. Our implementation is distinct and it's maintained independently by us. Um, while the structure of the code is similar, uh, the data structures are not exactly the same. Um, and it's not, uh, you know, you're not going to find the exact libfmt code um, in our headers. Um, so all of the things that format needs to do to be fast and to work at all involve some kind of type erasure. That's basically the entire path from calling std format to uh, ending up in, you know, underscore write float to, out, you know, to output iterator um, is all just doing various kinds of type erasure. And so that's a lot of what this talk is going to be about. And um, if you're not familiar, type erasure is anything that uh, remo that removes type information from the visibility of the compiler. Um, and it's, it's usually used if you're passing that around, you know, in some other way, or you need really detailed control over how things are stored, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you need to store heterogeneous types, um, you know, you can make an abstract-based uh, type and uh, store pointers to that. Um, if you need to allow different types to be manipulated with the same code, and in general, in this whole talk, when I talk about like the same code, I'm talking about like assembly, like the generated code from the compiler, not uh, the same C++ template function. So I, 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 I basically always mean the exact same generated code. Um, and because of it allows you to use the same code, it can reduce code size substantially, which is a lot of why format needs to use it. Um, and you can use it for extension, like we do with uh, just regular old virtual base classes and virtual functions. Format uses uh, type erasure for everything under the sun. Um, we need to store the arguments you pass in in a collection. SNPrintf needs to do this too. SNPrintf, unfortunately, doesn't get to choose which data structure it uses. It gets to use the stack. Uh, that's the data structure you get. Um, but we get to choose. Um, so, yeah. Um, we need to allow the collection of arguments to be manipulated with the same code because we need to parse your format string and interact with the arguments to do error checking to pull, you know, to, you, for the whole functionality of uh, format. Um, and because of that, if we don't do any type erasure and just pass things through, we'd have to, every possible combination of uh, formatting arguments would, uh, would result in a duplicate copy of all the formatting code. It would not be fun. Uh, we also need to reduce, uh, the, a similar problem happens with the output iterator type that you're formatting into. Um, and we use similar techniques for that. And then if you customize uh, std format using the uh, specialization of std formatter, which we'll get into briefly a little later, um, we need to, uh, you know, we don't know, bef we can't know beforehand uh, all of the possible customizations you could do, so we need to, um, uh, we need to be able to call your customization in a totally generic way. Um, there's different ways to do type erasure. Uh, the standard library has a bunch of them. Um, also, if you've ever used scripting languages, there's basically, like they just have a standardized way that they do this. Like pi object is a, just, is a tag union. Um, and you, know, you see that in Python and Ruby and in any of these languages, essentially. Um, the standard has variant any uh, function and uh, various other types that, that involve uh, erasure. Variant and any are um, the two most direct. Um, lots of uses of virtual functions. If you've ever used the pimpleidium, it's the same idea. You're, um, you're making it so the compiler doesn't really have to know as much about your code. Um, so to understand exactly where we use these techniques, uh, we need to understand a little bit of what happens when you when you call format. 
Um, so there's a bunch of, of std format functions in the standard. They're all implemented in terms of vformat too. Um, there's also a wide, there's wide versions of, of all these functions in this, in this talk. I'm ignoring them and I've removed a lot of character type parameters uh, for brevity basically. But if you want to do wide strings, um, that's fine, you can do that, it works. Um, so all the format functions are implemented in terms of this one function, vformat2, and it takes an output iterator, a format string, and a string view. That type has changed a little bit with some, some of the defect reports uh, that have been voted into the standard, but we'll get there. Um, and then it takes this format args parameter, which is a, which is a new type uh, that the standard specifies. And it says, all right, this is the actual full type of format args. The important thing to notice here is that uh, format args depends on the back insert iterator. Um, and you'll notice that that's a format buffer. That's not the output iterator. We'll get to why that is. Originally in C++ 20, when format was first voted in, it didn't, this didn't last long, but the standard actually said that uh, format context was back insert or iterator of, um, of the output. Um, and it would be different for each call to V format too. Uh, that didn't last long, it was a problem. We'll get into why. Uh, so V format uh, two does two things. Constructs a format handler, which is a bunch of callbacks, that's it. It's just, a, it's, not, it's not a virtual class or anything. It's just a class with methods and the methods serve as parsing callbacks. Um, and then it passes that to parse format string, which parses the format string. And again, the important thing to, uh, to look at here is what these functions, what types these functions depend on. Um, format handler depends on the out, on the type of out, the output iterator, uh, the format string type, which is string view or w string view, um, and the format args, the args type. And then parse format string depends on the full type of that handler. Uh, so that means that every time the output iterator type or the type of the formatting arguments chain, uh, changes, we're gonna emit, it, it'll be a new template spe uh, specialization um, for all of the parsing code and all of the parsing callbacks. Uh, this isn't, that's not all the code in std format, but it's a large uh, percentage of the code in std format. So it's a lot of code and we need to avoid that if at all possible. Uh, which is why we can't just like keep format, have format handler be a variadic, have a variadic template parameter and, and forward the, ar the arguments directly through. Uh, that's just, it would be too much. So we need to, and, and it's also why we do this um, uh, format buffer thing, which again, we'll get to later, but that's um, the, the, the arguments are the by far the biggest thing that you must uh, type erase or you're just gonna generate an absolutely enormous amount of code. And so the standard spe uh, specifies essentially uh, that you must provide a type, some kind of type erase data structure uh, for these. I suppose you could, you could forward all the arguments through and kind of fake it and return the basic format arguments at the last minute if you really wanted to uh, have an implementation that generated a completely absurd amount of code. But uh, so what the standard says is that the data structure is just gonna be a variant of all of the basic built-in types and then this handle to a uh, user customized uh, type. And you'll notice, all right, well, variant's a tag union. So it's gonna have the tag and then it's gonna be, the union itself will be as big, will be as big as and have the same alignment as the biggest uh, and most aligned type in the union, respectively. Uh, in this case, string view and handle are both probably uh, two pointers big um, and are both probably aligned on the same alignment as a pointer. Um, and then it has the uh, union discriminator tag, which I suppose could be smaller than a pointer. However, the standard then says, format arg store and basic format args is gonna be an array of basic format arg. So even if the, the handle, in our implementation, uh, I think it is a, a pointer size, but even if it was smaller, 
it doesn't help because the whole thing has to be aligned. And so basic format arg in the standard, this is three pointers big for everybody. Uh, how nice on a 64-bit platform. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. And the standard says, you know, when you call, um, there is a function make format args that uh, in the call to that, it constructs this uh, format arg store and the standard has dashes in it, which indicates that we don't have to actually uh, expose a type called format arg store. It's just, uh, it's expository. And then that's immediately converted into basic format args, which is what you saw passed into vformat2. And that's just, it just pulls out the size and stores a pointer to the array, that's all. Um, so having three pointers per type, uh, you know, it's better than generating combinatorially more code, uh, but it's not great, we don't wanna do that. Um, and actually, uh, initially, uh, I was just gonna do that and then benchmark it because it's good to measure stuff. But before I got there, one of our contributors saw this and was like, and also because um, I figured that the use case where you store the basic format args for reuse later would be pretty uncommon. Uh, but one of our contributors saw that and he's like, well, in my company, like we've been using libfmt and like we store those all the time. And like, this is like the data, like this particular d data structure uh, would, is kind of optimal for us. And, you know, he implemented the whole thing. Uh, so a big shout out to Misco. And uh, it's, it's been great having people jump on stuff really early and implement exactly the thing they need. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so huge shout out to our contributors all through the talk. But so in MSVC, um, we can save some, some bits here and do it a little better. Um, by basically going from an array of these, of, of variants, an array of structs, uh, to a struct with two arrays in it. This is a common thing that you can do if you have padding problems and you need to save some space that, it, that is otherwise just going to maintaining the alignment uh, of your types. This is an effective strategy to combat that. Um, so we store an index which consists of the, the union tag and then also an offset into the storage which is stored uh, all compacted. So if it's a character and then an int and then another character, it's gonna be, you know, the first byte is the character and then the next four are the int and then the next, the next one's the character with no padding. Um, and then when we convert to format args, just like before, we pull out the size and then just store a pointer to format arg store. We actually store a pointer to the first member uh, just because of how we have to access things, but um, that saves us uh, an, an arrow operator uh, when, we're <laughs> when we're extracting the data here. And then the, the index is just one pointer, one pointer size and we just pack the type into four bits in there. This does mean um, on its size T, so if you build for x86, format supports slightly less total arguments than on x64. However, um, this would be passing in hundreds and hundreds of megabytes of individual arguments into format, and it would probably be like thousands of, uh, of individual arguments. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, if you put all of that data in a container, you can format it great. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's the, the structure of just how we store the arguments. You'll notice that basic format arg itself doesn't show up there at all. Uh, and that's because we create that on the fly when, when it's needed um, in, the, in the parsing code. Um, and so this, this is something that all, that many uses of variadic functions in C++ may want to do. Uh, basically, it means that you only get kind of duplicated code gen for the initial function that is variadic and then you pack everything into some structure. You don't have to forward everything along, it can make programming a little easier because uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, perfect forwarding or, you know, losing CV qualified, well, you do when you write the uh, type erase container, but after that, um, 
you don't. Um, it, it doesn't really gain us much in performance because uh, we really have to do this. And if we didn't do it, then the data structure we get is again like the stack. Um, but it is nice that we control it because we don't have to use the stack data structure. Um, note that uh, while a lot of times people associate type erasure with allocating memory on the heap, none of what format does does that. Uh, it's just pointers to the caller stack. Um, so the next uh, thing we're gonna talk about, also in terms of code size, is that FMT buff, um, which is the output iterator type. And again, this is the implementation of vformat2, uh, just with the format handler stuck into the parameter list. Uh, and you'll notice that all the parsing code depends on the type of the output iterator. So that's a shame. So if you have a program where um, you're using, you're formatting into multiple different things, say a string and then a vector. Um, we generate a lot of extra code. Um, so again, the standard initially specified that we had to uh, just pass in the, the, the output iterator type here. Uh, we didn't have a choice. We did what the standard said. Um, and every additional iterator, output iterator type you used was about 30K uh, of additional code that would end up in your executable. That's not great. Um, and it's a pretty severe issue. Um, P2216 is the name of the paper that fixed this, as well as adding um, some more safety, compile time safety features. Uh, and that's a, that was adopted as a defect report for uh, C++ 20. Um, so we need more type erasure. We need to avoid uh, making all of our parsing code dependent on the output iterator type. And we do that by making our own container. Uh, we make a special container, and that's what FMT buffer is. All the underscores uh, that you see here uh, is just because uh, this is standard library code, and uh, we use reserved names to avoid clashing with uh, our users. So double underscores and an underscore followed by a capital letter. If you're writing include guards, uh, please don't write them with an underscore followed by a capital letter. Uh, anyhow, um, format buffer has the usual containery things, uh, some data, size, and a capacity, um, and has pushback. You need pushback for output iterators. That's kind of what they do. And then it has a virtual function called grow. Um, and that's where th that'll go and do the meat of uh, what you need. And, uh, the reason we need a size and capacity is because that way pushback doesn't have to call grow every time. Uh, you only have to call grow when your size is bigger than your capacity. Um, so this is the uh, implementation, th this is what actually happens. Uh, this is a derived class from format buffer um, that we construct immediately in, in vformat2 and we'll see that later. Stores its output iterator, small fixed buffer, um, and all grow does is it says, have we written more than the size of our fixed buffer? And if we have, it's gonna call this flush function, which goes and does the, um, which actually writes to the output iterator. Um, and then once it's done with that, uh, it goes ahead and sets size to zero and capacity to 256. Um, and we can continue on our way writing. Um, so to flush, uh, we have another implementation, uh, another slight optimization here uh, that's fun, uh, where normally uh, what you do is you just copy from your little fixed size buffer into your output iterator. Unfortunately, that calls push back every time, which means that the container, if, it, if the actual underlying container needs to grow, it's probably gonna double in size or something. It doesn't know exactly how much it's gonna need to grow. Um, and it also means that uh, if you're in, especially if you're in debug mode, all of our additional um, uh, safety checks with our iterator debugging feature uh, are gonna happen multiple times, uh, which isn't great. So um, 
we specialize this function for uh, basic strings and vectors. Uh, there are several other contiguous containers in the standard library that we probably could uh, optimize for, but strings and vectors are the real important ones. Um, so we just check if, uh, so we get the container type from the output iterator. Uh, that's using um, just template argument deduction to get that type. We check if it's one of them that we support. And if it is, we pull the container out of the output iterator. This is using the usual, uh, there's a common trick with output iterators. You write a class that's derived from output iterator, and then you can make the container public because the container is a protected member. Um, so we do that, and then we just insert. Otherwise, uh, this last line here is just outputting um, into the, uh, um, um, the, the, the underlying container. Um, this was also, this optimization was also initially contributed uh, by an open source contributor. Um, and uh, the, uh, we, uh, we, the, the final version that uh, is shipped is a little bit different from the, the full optimization that you can do. Um, you know, um, one thing that if you're writing your own format library, depending on your opinions on things, um, you can use this optimization for like anything that has an insert method. But in the standard library, uh, we're not really allowed to do that. Uh, we, can't, we can't just look at a user insert method from some random user provided type and say, oh, that must work just like the insert in the standard library. Uh, it doesn't uh, work like that. <laughs> uh, we have some other um, specializations of um, this buffer class that we use. Um, this one is for if there's a vformat2 function that's a replacement for, um, that's a kind of direct replacement for sprintf. So it's for formatting into fixed size buffers. Um, and so this just, it's, well, if your container was just a pointer, uh, then we don't need to keep track of the size. We have infinite size because we're just trusting you that you're not gonna write off the end. It's what the standard says to do. Um, and yeah, and there's, <laughs> uh, grow doesn't have to do anything. And it, if it gets called, you have a problem because <laughs> you've written uh, larger than the content of your entire virtual memory uh, space um, into your output iterator, which probably isn't what you wanted to do. Um, so now that we have this, this uh, special buffer type, um, we change V format to, instead of just calling format handler and uh, parse format string, it's gonna, it's gonna check if we already gave it uh, an output iterator into a format buffer. And if we did, we're just gonna use that so that we don't double wrap it. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna make a new iterator buffer uh, from your output iterator. It's gonna form an output iterator into that. Um, and then call parse format string. And thus, the full type of the output iterator that actually gets used is the same no matter what. Um, and we've kind of gotten performance here too, not just code size. Um, the optimizations we did, I suppose we could have, form, we could have forwarded the full type through uh, and still done many of them. But uh, the the performance penalty for that virtual call is really not a big deal uh, because of that small buffer. If you're on an embedded system that can't afford uh, 256 characters on the stack like that, uh, maybe you'll, you'd make a different implementation choice. But um, you know, the, type, the, the erased buffer type gives us a location uh, in which to do all, all this stuff. Um, we don't have to go through pushback all the time uh, we can do the optimizations, and it's just a, every additional output iterator is just a tiny additional bit of code, um, because uh, you know V format two does get a different. Uh, you're going to generate new code for every type, but none of the functions, all the functions it calls are going to be the same, uh, so it's not a big deal. Um, the last set of tricks in the format front end here is uh, for user defined formatters. Um, this is what a user-defined formatter looks like. Um, it's got a parse and a format function. You'll notice parse is const expr. Again, in the original uh, C++ 20 specification, 
who is not necessarily const expert. Um, uh, that was added. Um, uh, P2216 again added compile time format string checking so that, um, you know, parse is now const expert. So at compile time, um, we can parse your whole format string and catch a lot of errors for you right then and there. Uh, not 100% of errors, in particular with those dynamically specified uh, format specs, you can still get into a little trouble. But um, you're not going to. You're not going to be able to pass the wrong number of arguments. Um, you're not, in, in most cases, you're not going to be able to use the specifiers that don't make any sense um, or, you know, that are for the wrong type or anything like that. If you do any of that, um, your code's not going to compile. Um, this is limited, by the way, to format and format2. The V format functions that take the all already type erased arguments uh, don't have this compile time checking. Um, and that's because you really need an escape hatch from this feature, um, in particular if you want to localize things. Um, because for localization, uh, the format string itself is going to be a runtime value. It's not going to be user controlled really, except by their selection of uh, language but it'll be runtime pulled from some database from you know, get text or uh, what have you. Um, so in that case, we won't do the checks. Um, also, if the checks fail, uh, the diagnostics right now are not fantastic. Um, that's a, we're working on that, but unfortunately, they're not always great. If you get a compile error, in a call to format and you get really bad diagnostics, uh, go ahead and throw the V on there and then you'll get, and then run a test that goes through that path and you'll get a runtime error that is, will throw an exception and that, except the, the throwing of that exception is what, um, is what caused the compile time error um, in regular format. And so that can be easier to diagnose. You can get a debugger there. Um, and then parse and format are separate because um, format won't work at compile time in all likelihood. I mean, you saw the type erased uh, format arg structure, right? That's uh, that's doing a lot of uh, bit bit blasting into arrays of unsigned char, um, and just that is a little problematic at compile time. Uh, not to mention, um, you know, uh, charcom for example is not const expert. Um, and you can use formatter to customize format for your types. You can customize both parse and format, although parse has to be const expert, which is a little sad, I guess, um, since, uh, you know, you can't have parse, like, spin up a Python interpreter and, uh, you know, run some arbitrary Python code. That'd be fun. Um, but uh, anything you can do at compile time, uh, you modify the string parsing, uh, different, uh, you know, different notations for for anything that comes after that colon. Um, and then for formatting, you know, you can convert to a string however you want based on those specifiers. Uh, you'll typically store the specifiers inside uh, as a member uh, variable of, of, the, of your specialization of formatter. And the standard provides built-in formatters that do all the things that format does for built-in types. Those are never instantiated in our implementation when you're formatting a built-in type, but they're there for when you customize stuff and want to reuse things. Uh, they are also used at compile time. Uh, so I guess they are instantiated, but code is never generated for them. Um, so here you can see this is kind of the prototypical example. You just inherit from one of the standard ones. And the standard one already has parse, so you, that's out of the way. It's done. You've, uh, you've implemented that. Then you just implement format, and you just call format on uh, uh, from from your base class. Easy enough. Um, one of the reasons we don't uh, use the formatter struct at runtime when we're formatting is because the separation of format and parse means that if you do the th the thing where you can pull in a width or a precision from one of the passed in arguments. Um, we have to pull out the index that you used and store it for later 
because the parse function of the formatter doesn't have access to all of the formatting arguments. It only, it just has access to the string. So we need to save that for later so that at runtime, um, you can, uh, or when you're formatting, uh, you can refer to what was previously parsed and, and pull out the right values. So that's a little bit of a extra thing we have to do that we don't have to do for the built-in types because we just parse and format all in one go. Um, and when we get a customized type, uh, a type that isn't one of the built-in types and that has a formatter specialization that meets uh, the standards formatter requirements. It's a set of requirements much like the iterator ones. Uh, it's, not a, um, it's, it's not a formal concept in the, in the standard wording, uh, but we have a concept that you know, does as much as we can um, to verify that you meet the requirements. So um, when you have an argument like that, we store it in basic format args using this handle class, which is a, a inner class of basic format arg. Um, and it just stores a pointer to the actual value on the caller stack, or I guess if they, you know, if it was on the heap, you know, we'll point there too. Um, and then a function pointer to the thing to do when we encounter this argument. Um, and that, this underscore format function calls both uh, parse and, the parse and the format function of the user defined formatter. Um, and when you call make format args, when we construct the handle type, this is literally the code we use, uh, except with line breaks inserted. Um, we just store the pointer and then we uh, right then and there make a lambda function uh, that calls the things we need. Um, so this uh, formatter type is us saying, all right, what's the actual type of the user defined formatter? And then we call parse and we call format. Um, not immediately, inside the lambda function. And then um, that this lambda function is called uh, later from within the, from within one of the callbacks in that format handler uh, type that we saw earlier. Um, so, erasing the user defined formatter is, uh, format type is pretty critical. If we didn't do that, we'd get into the same situation as with the formatting arguments, where um, every time you give us a custom type that we haven't seen before, uh, or if you give us types that we have seen before but in a different order, uh, we'd have to generate all the code again. Um, and we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to just use the same code and call a function pointer that does the right things. And um, uh, because of that, we need to pick an actual concrete representation for these uh, custom arguments that's, uh, that is the same for everybody. Um, otherwise, aforementioned problems. Um, and the, the thing where we use a lambda function in the constructor to pull out these function pointers um, is actually kind of an interesting general thing that you can do if you have a concept that you would like to store in a real actual object and use like a, a abstract based class. Um, you can have a constructor that's constrained on that, on that concept applying and then pull everything out. Um, I guess you can do that without concepts too, but it's, you know, um, this is something that uh, maybe someday, uh, in a far future version of the standard, there, there'll be syntax for, uh, but who knows. So the, the core things that format needs to do to make, the, to make this facility work um, is just all about getting from that kind of variadic template call into concrete code that's, that, that you know, does a specific thing and everything you passed in is in a specific data structure that's laid out correctly. Um, and so these techniques uh, reduce code size, let you store all of your arguments in the same structure. Um, it lets the same code manipulate them all. 
um, and you can do this kind of open extension, um, which is useful. Uh, and I also want to give a shout out for all these techniques to our open source contributors. Huge parts of the std format feature uh, were contributed by people outside of Microsoft um, into the runtime, and uh, it's been uh, kind of incredible, especially, um, you know, ha having people basically bring exactly what their requirements are uh, that you kind of couldn't really have predicted beforehand, having people bring those right to you uh, is really quite nice. Um, and we've also had uh, contributions from Victor. Uh, Victor contributed the um, uh, the original uh, impl implementation of the output iterator stuff, uh, and also is the author of libfmt and and did a crap ton of work. Uh, you know, not only did he contribute the implementation, but he also made the implementation uh, legal <laughs> uh, and worked on. Uh, correct, you know, uh, getting that defect report through, and, and um, he's just done. A, it's, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, he's he's been the driving force behind uh, getting STD format into the standard, um, and he's written a ton of papers, and it's a really quite fantastic library. And uh, right now, uh, oops, there we go. Um, Right now, um, we're shipping std format in Visual Studio 2019 16.11 and Visual Studio 2022 uh, under std C++ latest. Um, it would be in std C++ 20. However, as mentioned, uh, several defect reports uh, uh, were voted into the standard and have come up. And those defect reports changed some of the semantics and had some ABI implications for format um, and some other library features as well. Um, and so we uh, we are not going to provide std format under slash std C++20 until all of those defect reports have been implemented. Uh, so that that way um, you can't get into a situation where you've um, you know, depended on something that the standard has changed out from under you, and now the API has changed, and what are you gonna do? So, uh, in an upcoming release of Visual Studio 2022, we'll have the defect reports implemented, and then at that time, we'll backport them, we'll backport those defect reports into an upcoming servicing release of Visual Studio 2019 16.11. Um, and uh, the features, the C++ 20 library features will be enabled under std C++ 20 in both versions of Visual Studio 2019 uh, at that time. Um, also, um, uh, like I said, std format's very similar to libfmt, and so if you're working on a cross-platform project, uh, you can use libfmt. Uh, right now, uh, MSVC is the only implementation, is the only implementation of the standard library that uh, has std format. Um, lots of progress has been, is being made in um, libc++ as well. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the status of libstud c++ because I don't follow their uh, the development that much um, because, uh, you know, for various uh, reasons. But uh, uh, they should hopefully have it eventually. Uh, but if you're on a cross-platform project, uh, libfmt is uh, basically a, repla a drop in replacement. There's very minor differences and it has some additional features. For example, you can pass named arguments into libfmt, which you can't do with std format. Um, and it, uh, libfmt lets you compile um, uh, your format strings uh, to gain a little bit of performance. Um, uh, if you are on a cross platform project, um, you could use std format on Windows and libfmt on the other platforms, or you could just use libfmt everywhere for consistency and switch everything over to std format at once. Um, so yeah, we're gonna uh, bring this to std C++20 um, in an upcoming release. Um, the, uh, the feature is currently supported, even though it's in latest. Uh, the ABI may change. Um, you shouldn't be passing uh, you know, uh, basic format args or any of the new types between across ABI boundaries. 
Um, and there's some pretty big semantic changes in how chrono formatting works, so be careful there. Um, yeah, uh, we've only got one day left, but uh, enjoy the conference. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, a lot of people uh, from the Visual C++ team are here. Um, and we have a survey. And uh, these are the other talks. And um, one note, if you are using this, uh, please compile your code with slash UTF-8. Uh, and it increases performance dramatically. It's over an order of magnitude better performance. Um, because if you don't, uh, if you don't use slash UTF-8, we don't know what your execution character set is. So we have to assume that it could be one of the ones where uh, we can't just search for replacement fields in your format string. We have to step through the string character by character because uh, the curly brace byte could be the second byte of a multi-byte character sequence. And that, input, that impacts performance quite dramatically. Uh, there are um, very recently, we now do have a way for the compiler to tell us uh, which encoding we're using. So in, um, at least in Latin 1252, which is sort of the default on English systems, um, we can fix this. Um, but right now, add slash UTF-8 to your uh, build system. It'll probably fix bugs that you didn't know you had. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and I think now is uh, time for questions. Hello. Um, so on slide 25, um, is there a reason why you wouldn't throw an exception inside of there? Uh, inside of which? Inside of grow. This is um, the pointer. Ah, yes. Um, well, by the, so grow is only, so we initialize the size or uh, um, the capacity, sorry, to you know the maximum possible 64-bit value. So by the time uh, it's structurally impossible for grow to be called before you, you know, before you have like other like major problems. <laughs> okay, uh, that makes sense. And in particular, before you like try and write into the kernel's memory. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, you know, theoretically, we probably wouldn't throw an exception from in there. We'd probably put a STL internal assert that says it's unreachable, or just not implement it and just have it call the null function pointer. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that's why. Cool. And I have another comment. Um, you said uh, something about Erno having. Um, uh, concurrency, um, so if you have two thre threads uh, running uh, with SN printf. Um, I think Erno is actually in thread local storage, so I don't think that there is such a problem, at least for, for many people. Yeah, on, on some platforms that is true. Sometimes it's global. Thread local storage does have some additional uh, overhead uh, in some cases, and it, Erno also can inhibit certain optimizations as well uh, because it makes the function have global side effects, uh, which for formatting into some buffer, there's no reason it should have global side effects, right? It only really needs to read the things that you pass into it and write into the thing you, uh, into the thing you say. So uh, yes, there, there are various implementations of, of how Erno works, and some of them are less problematic than others. Any questions from online? We have a few questions from online. Um, first question is, is there a way to format a container, for example, std vector with an arbitrary element that can be formatted? Um, we're working on it. Uh, so C++ 20, that's one of the defect reports, actually. Um, uh, C++ 20, uh, or 
there, there's work being done to add um, the formatting of ranges to uh, uh, an upcoming version of the C++ standard. And vectors are ranges. And so we, we want to be able to format ranges and also coroutine-based generators. Um, so uh, one of the defect reports that um, we're implementing is a minor change to the signature of format um, to enable that. Uh, in particular, um, the, the format in C++20, um, the, it's const args dot 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 args, which um, prevent, which is problematic for some kind, for some ranges. Um, although it does let you format bit fields. They'll be formatted as an integer. Uh, after we implement the recently voted in defect report, um, this will become just args dot, it'll be perfect forwarding. Uh, it'll be args ref ref dot dot dot. And you'll no longer be able to format bit fields, I'm sorry. Um, but it'll clear the way for uh, formatting containers. Um, Great, thanks. Um, I have another online question. Uh, if I'm doing buffered I.O. and already have a buffer, is it possible to utilize it? <sighs> um, so vformat2 will always do this uh, type erasure thing. Um, so you do get some double buffering. Um, we looked at, we have done some benchmarks here and Victor has also done benchmarks in LiveFMT, and the performance gains were pretty minimal uh, from doing that particular optimization. And also, um, you know, we have to have a way of discovering exactly how you are buffering. For example, um, some IO streams types are technically buffered but we'd still want to use the small fixed size buffer because uh, the um, some implementations made poor choices on the si on how much buffering they were going to do, or they need to do stuff to sync with uh, Studio. Cool. Um, we have another question from online. How do you make sure the buffer is big enough? Um, so the fixed size buffer that we use uh, is fixed size. And what we do is we, we know how big it is and we write that many characters in between flushes to the output iterator. So once we've written um, 256 characters here, um, we just copy everything to the actual container that you're formatting into. We also do this when we're done formatting, of course. Um, and then we can just start, again, outputting stuff to the beginning of, of our buffer. Um, for the specialization for pointers, um, that one is specifically, when you're using that, you're opting into um, a somewhat dangerous feature where you have to make sure that the buffer you give it is big enough for any possible thing that could be formatted into that. So, for example, if you're formatting floats into it, like there's an actual maximum length of the float after being converted to a string. Um, there's also a, uh, um, a function in the standard that'll tell you the size of what you're formatting. And there's a function called format to n where you can pass this is the size of my buffer and we'll stop when we get to that size, just like sn printf. Great, thanks. Um, and then I have two more quick questions from online. Uh, first one is from anonymous attendee, is Victor Zeverac still involved with STD format? Uh, yes, he is. Um, so I mentioned that um, he uh, actually contributed some of the, so our, our implementation is directly based off his library. Um, and he himself also contributed some of some code to our implementation. Um, he is still involved in libfmt. Um, I think um, I don't follow libfmt's uh, uh, development quite close enough to know if his uh, number of commits into that library or anything has dropped off, but he's also quite involved in 
the standardization process for uh, both the you know generator extensions, uh, fixing various little bugs in std format, and working on some on uh, upcoming text related features. Uh, for example, std print, which is like format but for replacing printf instead of sprintf. Right. Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs>